So Roblox introduced a Brand Project API, which is an update focused on controlling and creating branded assets in your Roblox games. And I will be overviewing it in this video. But as usual, leave a like and sub to support the channel, and let's just get to it. So first I'm just going to be showing how to use the API itself, and then I'm going to provide more information on the dev forum post. So let me just add a script into the server script service. And I'm going to name this one Brand API. Where unfortunately, I'm not really going to be able to use it since I don't have any branded assets in this game. But basically, I'm just going to copy the code from the dev forum post. And here it is. So we get all of these services. Then we need to create a remote event in the replicator storage. So let me just do that. And then we need a branded asset, which is also located in the replicated storage as well. So I'm just going to add a part, name this one branded asset, and for example, just change the color to red. And really quickly, since this is a server script, we don't actually need to use the wait for child. So just to make things a little bit more clear, I'm just going to leave it as this. But then we basically create a default part, and since it's not parented anywhere, it's not going to work for the client. So I'm just going to put it into the replicated storage. And maybe I should actually zoom this a little bit in. But anyway, then we have the player added event, right? And we basically just have two variables. One is success and one is can view, where we check with the policy service if the player can view the branded asset with the can view brand project async method with the player argument and this string, which is the brand project ID that you acquire by contacting Roblox. But like I said, I'm going to go more into this in the dev forum post. But basically, if it's a success and can view meaning that the player can view the branded asset, we send a remote event with the branded asset and if they cannot view it, we just send the default asset instead. But now the player also needs to receive the event, so we just need to put a local script that's going to listen to it. And we can just go to the starter player, then the starter player scripts and add another local script, where this one is going to be called brand API local. And right here I'm going to copy another snippet from the dev forum, which is just this one. And I don't know why the player service is here since it's not even used anywhere, but we basically just receive the event, right? With the part to load. And this part is basically the branded asset that we send right here. And we simply just clone it and put it into the workspace. So if I were to do a playtest, the part is going to be right here. And you can see that it created a normal part and not a red one like this one right here, since this is supposed to be the branded asset that we created. But of course we are kind of not able to view it, because we don't have the access to the brand project that was requested in the can view brand project async method. Where really quickly I can also just print out the success and the can view variable, where it's going to say that success was true, meaning that this method ran without any problems, but the can view is set to false. And that's really about for the overview of the API, it's really just this one simple method for right now. So yeah, let me just go to the dev forum post right now. And here it is. So right here we have the introducing brand project API. New controls for branded assets. Where a Roblox staff is saying that, Hi creators, we are excited to launch a new control for branded assets. Supported by a brand project API. And this update is directed to people who partnered on integrations with the growing number of brands coming to Roblox. And this just talks about the opportunities and brand suitability by limiting the exposure to out of segment users and on the new controls for branded assets, where they are saying that the new controls will enable you to show branded assets to selected users within your experience. And these assets can be anything like coffee cups or wrapped race cars, and it's based on age or location. And what this exactly means is explained more in the using the brand project API. Basically saying to implement the control, you need to work with Roblox to use the brand project API, which makes calls into your Roblox experience to know if a user is eligible to view a branded asset, and then you will be able to use the API to control asset exposure by age, ranging from 13 plus to 21 plus, and location like United States, Canada, and 24 other countries. And overall, it's set by the brand to ensure that you can comply with their requirements. So you or a brand are basically going to have control over settings with each branded asset to, for example, know if it's going to be appropriate to show to users under the age of 21. But moving on, here is the code example that I already went over in the first segment of the video, and then a segment saying that but while this shouldn't impact the majority of branded assets, what do you mean by shouldn't impact? You are either supposed to make a system that's going to impact or not going to impact already existing branded assets. Stating that it shouldn't impact is going to have developers basically question if it's going to break their already existing branded assets or not. But anyway, be aware that if the design of the branded assets or the integration will change the content maturity rating of your experience, including well these categories, you must resubmit the updated answers to 
the Experience Guidelines Questionnaire in Creator Hub, so your experience content maturity label remains accurate. But this is basically like a normal thing that you would have to do anyway for basic assets, but I think they are just leaving the statement right here for brand safety and so on. And we are excited to see it creating more great partnership between the creators and the brands on Roblox, while raising the bar on the brand suitability. And thank you. So now we have the frequently asked questions, asking something like what will the experience look like for non-eligible users? And non-eligible means basically not suited for the branded asset, saying that they will either see nothing or a fallback asset created by the developer. And for this point, it would be much better if you as the developer didn't have to create a fallback asset manually. Since like I did with the code example, right here you have to create a branded asset and a default asset inside of a server script. And it would be much better to just have a fallback asset that you could change somewhere like the creator store on asset settings. And what I mean by that, if I just go to the creator hub, for example, I have an office share. Now, now, unfortunately, this is just a normal developer product and not a branded asset, but it would be nice to have like a fallback asset that you can change in one of these categories where you would just simply put the ID of the asset that would be the default option, so you wouldn't have to put multiple assets inside of, for example, server storage, since that is going to take more resources from the server, and it also would be a pretty big quality of life improvement. But again, moving on. If the asset is a core to the game experience, for example, a car in a racing game, we would recommend having a fallback unbranded car for users who cannot see the branded asset. I mean, this would be good if you only had one car in-game and, for example, multiple branded skins, but if it was a different car every time, you would have to have the branded car model and a fallback car model as well. And the fallback asset is not provided by the engine API. I mean, just why? <laughs> this will have the ability to show different assets on different player clients, so in the same race car example above, it's possible for an 18 plus player to see a branded car and for an under 18 player to see a general car. And what's kind of rough about this API is that you would have to check for each client if they are able to basically see every asset every time somebody would try to load a branded car. And imagine if you had like 50 people in game, you would basically just have to make a system which is going to check if the player can see the branded asset every time a player is going to change the car. Or alternatively, you can do all of this beforehand and just check every single asset whenever the player joins the game. And for example, just keep these variables in for example session data for each player viewing every asset. But now there is a question of, I'm running independent ads, can I use this API? And at this time Brand Project API is only accessible to developers who will work directly with Roblox. And developers with experiences showing independent ads should be using the policy service API. And if I use this API, does this mean that the branded asset becomes classified as an ad by default? And the short answer is no. And there is also a point saying that the brand selections are not exposed to the developer. I mean, I know that this is only in the interest of the brand but shouldn't the developer know what the brand is going to basically be putting in their game since what if the brand does a mistake and for example sets a 21 plus 21 plus asset to be displayed to users 13 plus the developer is going to be facing consequences and possibly have their game taken down and also this does not change how roblox classifies the asset by default and a brand might determine their assets should be treated as an ad and if so they must work with the respective developer to avoid the policies and terms of advertising like this whole point could be a bit flawed just in case there is a little bit of miscommunication. But yeah, how do I leverage this functionality when creating an experience? Saying that the brand is going to provide the required age and geography to add their branded asset to your experience. Either a brand or a developer will work with Roblox to create a brand project ID. And to request a brand project ID you need to fill out this form, which I'm going to be showing in a second. And you can use the brand project ID through the API to implement the branded asset to the right users within your experience. Now can I use this API for my own experience? experiences without brand. And at this point this functionality is only for branded assets, since I kind of tried to fill out this form and create a branded asset for a video tutorial to just show how you can modify the asset and basically show the process of creating a brand project ID, but I didn't get an answer back so yeah. Let's continue. Will there be a charge for this feature? And no, there won't be any cost. Is this for inexperienced items, UGC items or both? And this is just for inexperienced branded assets. So yeah, that's the dev form post. And now for the form itself. Right here we have a Roblox brand project ID request form and all of this is basically what I already went over with some additional info like Roblox saying that they will provide you with a brand project ID for the branded asset after you submit a request. And now for the form itself you have the Roblox username where I would put mine in which is is Paul with a capital I at the end, my email which I can just copy from right here 
then a link to your Roblox experience which is just going to be whatever and a name of the brand you are working with. So this can be something like for example Spotify and brief description of the API usage. So if I had a Spotify logo in my game for example, I can just say something formal like the API would allow the display of, of a branded logo in a Roblox experience. Like this is just an example but normally it would be way longer with more information on how the branded asset is going to be used but since this is only a video tutorial I'm not going to go much into detail with this. But yeah you can see that this form is pretty simple and overall requesting the branded asset is not going to be too hard but after you submit the form you should get an email back with the brand project ID for the asset and then the brand is going to have access to basically modify it. But yeah, that's basically going to mark the end of this video. So again, this is a pretty useful update for branded assets, which is going to allow developers and brands to have more control of the things that they create in their game with the use of the brand project API. But yeah, as usual, leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Also check out my Patreon page and thanks everyone for watching, hope you had a nice day and see you guys.